Welcome to Dr. Brothers Domino. In this video, we are going to answer this question. Um, if you're asked, what if your uh, self-hosted IR is running slow, what steps uh, you will take? Uh, this can be another question as well. Hey, you are using self-hosted IR and uh, your pipelines are running slow, what you will do? So this uh, can be asked in many ways. Uh, the answer are going to be the same. You have to do all those different things. Uh, so first of all, you're going to check the CPU and memory usage of a node on which your uh, self-hosted IR is installed. So if you go to the uh, data factory here, um, right there, uh, we have integration runtime and I have installed the uh, self-hosted IR on this uh, machine. So this is my laptop and if I click right there, I can see that uh, self-hosted IR is running and uh, this is a version of self-hosted IR and the number of uh, running nodes is one and then I can see that the uh, CPU use is the 90% and then available memory uh, is also here. One other way you will, uh, what you will do, you will log in uh, to that uh, self-hosted IR node. Uh, so maybe you are using v Azure VM uh, for self-hosted IR, or maybe it's uh, just uh, on-premises uh, server that you will remote into, and then uh, you go to the uh, task manager, and then uh, from the task manager you will see the CPU use and memory use. Uh, so that's uh, one way to do that. Uh, ch check the CPU usage and memory usage. Uh, one of the other thing I will advise you, this can be very misleading too. Let's say you are running a lot of pipelines and CPU usage is like 80% uh, or memory usage is 80% at that current time. Uh, so you might want to look into the CPU and memory usage uh, for a long time. Uh, so ask your uh, VM managers or uh, your uh, uh, other infra team uh, provide you the log or information for last 10 to 15 days where you can see the CPU use and memory usage. So if this is a consistent above 80 90 percent so you want to consider that uh, okay that could be a problem and uh, you are uh, limited on the resources uh, because all those pipelines uh, that you are uh, running by using self-hosted IR they are using uh, the CPU and memory of your node and uh, the mem you are limited on those uh, resources. Uh, so you might want to add uh, new uh, CPUs and add more memory to the node. Uh, second part uh, let's go to the network throughput uh, that's very important uh, because uh, if uh, you have a self-hosted IR node installed on your on-premises and it need to communicate with the, your uh, Azure cloud and uh, your network uh, is uh, not uh, uh, configured correctly or uh, it has uh, uh, not enough bandwidth uh, for the uh, upload and download uh, the, the, your pipelines could have be trouble uh, could have a trouble uh, maybe you are you copy, doing a lot of copy in parallel and uh, copy activities trying to load multiple files and network is not supporting it um, so in these, these cases you can work with your networking team and ask them hey uh, can you give me the network or bandwidth how much the bandwidth and the, all that uh, for this uh, node is available when uh, I'm doing copy between uh, my on-premises to the Azure cloud um, so that could be one of the things you want to work with the networking team uh, third one is check the settings for your limit uh, concurrent jobs so that's also very important here let me take you to the uh, integration runtime here and uh, then click on self-hosted IR uh, let's go here so we are uh, here in our self-hosted IR uh, and then uh, I'm going to go to the, let me see, uh, go to manage actually. Go to manage here, go to the integration uh, runtime. Why I'm uh, seeing, this is monitoring page. Fine, and I want to see the self-hosted uh, IR here. Okay, yeah, you will go to manage to see this pan. So you are, there are two places you are going to see the integration runtime. One on the manage, one on the monitor. So I went to my manage here and then went to integration runtime. And here I'm seeing my self-hosted integration runtime. So click right there and then uh, you have nodes here. And uh, here you can see that uh, I have a limped concurrent jobs. So uh, right now the value is a six that uh, you can increase to 32 max, you know. So if, uh, let's say, if I put this, uh, okay, only value three, that's the minimum value I can do. It means three concurrent jobs or pipelines are going to run. Uh. Now, in this case, uh, maybe you are running 20 pipelines, but uh, these three concurrents are running and waiting for the other one. So even you have CPU and memory and uh, your network is fine, uh, but you are restricting your self-hosted IR to run a max number of uh, 
jobs. So that's the one thing you want to consider. You want to check uh, if there is plenty of CPU and memory available. You want to increase that, uh, and you can go to 32 max. Uh, that's the value I believe you can go if you do 36. Uh, yes, uh, the value must be at most 24. Sorry, I was wrong. So that's the 24. Uh, the max you can have uh, right there. Okay, now if you run uh, 24, maybe you already have a lim put the lim max number here and you want to run 24. Now once you run 24 and your uh, um, CPU and memory is uh, utilized in 100% or 90%, that's also a problem. So in those cases, uh, you don't want to run all those pipelines or jobs in parallel. You might want to come back and say, okay, I want to run 20 and just leave some memory and CPU at least uh, for the uh, self hosted IR uh, to accommodate uh, all the jobs. Uh, another option could be you can add another node. There are four nodes uh, you can add in self hosted IR. So if you are uh, really using a lot of CPU and memory and you need to run a lot of uh, jobs, I will suggest you adding more nodes to it. Because if you will only add more CPU and memory, but uh, your uh, concurrent jobs are more like you're running 30, 40 concurrent jobs, uh, still uh, it can run 24 in parallel and wait for the other ones. Uh, so adding more CPU and memory is not going to help. Uh, you need to add another node uh, so you can run uh, the jobs parallel. Uh, let's go back to our nodes here and uh, now uh, uh, this is very important. Uh, number four, check if all pipelines are slow or few of them. So now if all pipelines are slow, that means there is some problem with the node. That could be CPU, memory, or that could be network problem. That's one of the things we want to check the first. But if uh, there, there are some pipelines uh, which are uh, taking more time than others, that means uh, there could be problem with our number five or number six. So that can be check the source extract time for slow pipeline or check the destination right time for the slow pipeline. So let me give you this example. I have seen some of the pipeline people run and they extract data from Oracle. So there's user store procedure in the copy activity or select query. And then they say like, oh, my pipeline is running very slow and the copy activity is taken almost 40 minutes. And uh, you know, it's very slow. Now, the slowness is not in the copy activity. When you check the throughput in copy activity, everything works fine. But the actual, when you take that query and run in Oracle so, um, on some uh, UI such as maybe you know Oracle developer tool it take only first 20 minutes to extract the data so it means the uh, Oracle is not returning the data quickly on the other hand I have seen uh, some of the places where people are writing the data to some SQL table that has indexes on that and uh, when do you write the data it take forever to write the data because there are millions of rows already present in those uh, fact tables. Uh, then uh, on top of that you have those indexes. Uh, so when you're loading uh, the loading process to the destination is slow. So you need to figure out maybe you want to do some partitioning on the destination, load the data and merge it into your final fact table. So these uh, things uh, are important. Uh, it's uh, each part has to be considered um, very in detail and you want to see what is playing role uh, to make the pipeline slow or the data factory uh, self-hosted IER slow you know overall so uh, this could be no problem with the self-hosted IER but there could be problem with your source or destination uh, for a single pipeline so you want to consider that now check if you have a latest version of self-hosted IER installed so this is very important now there could be right here if I go and uh, cancel this out and I'll go to monitor here or just click here. I believe it will show me uh, updates uh, here. It's not showing me version here, but I'm going to go to the monitor pa pan and then uh, I should be see that. So if I will go to monitor, click here, it's showing me the version. Now also if you need to upgrade, you can see right this so here. You can go to the manage and uh, self hosted IR here and then uh, go to the auto update and uh, you can see if there are any updates available the integration is uh, running the latest one right now for me so if uh, in your case uh, if it is running old version it's going to tell you hey new version is available uh, you can upgrade right away or uh, you can uh, schedule it uh, so that's your choice uh, i have multiple videos on that how to do this so. now 
um, don't just go let's say <laughs> I have seen scenarios and I have you know know a uh, lot of people who struggle actually with this uh, so sometime uh, this uh, integration uh, runtime is a program that's run, uh, written by the Microsoft right and uh, those are developers uh, who run it test it and all that and sometime when they even deploy the new version that might have impacted badly and then uh, your pipelines uh, running slow that's possible so uh, you might want to check in case there are two possibilities it is one you want to go to the latest version of self-hosted IR by considering or having faith in Microsoft saying okay latest version would have all the updates and it will uh, be faster second part if you have updated from the previous to the latest then there could be problem maybe with the latest there is some problem with the code bug or there could be uh, bad code or uh, you know they have not enough testing done and the latest version of IR is running slow than the previous so that's possibility so check with Microsoft and maybe they have uh, already uh, clients uh, who also have uh, told them the same thing and they will tell you you can go and downgrade your previous version while they will put the bug fixes and all that so work on that part it's not always you it can be this software is not written by you so it is written by Microsoft so always can ask them you have support with them okay now let's go to number eight check if the issue is with one specific activity check with the Microsoft if there is an issue with the specific activity so this is very important uh, let's say you are using 10 uh, pipelines and each of the pipeline uh, for each loop is uh, the problem or your lookup is the uh, given you problem so uh, once uh, you figure it out like okay so there is a problem with one specific activity and this activity is written by Microsoft uh, uh, engineers or developers uh, so you need to check with them hey I've been ha uh, using this uh, activity such as lookup with the same number of records it's been working fine I updated to the latest version and now all of a sudden it will start working slow not in one pipeline in many of them so then let them figure out and see if they had made some changes to the code that is playing role here and making your pipeline slow on your self-hosted IR now let's go to the next one are you using single node for self-hosted IR consider adding second node if you have more than 70% resource used so this is the same scenario where what I was talking about uh, let's say you have node and now you already want to concurrent jobs 24 and you are using more than 70 or 80 percent of your CPU and memory in they, these cases uh, I will recommend uh, uh, not to add more CPU and memory instead uh, I will suggest to add a second node there are two benefits so one uh, you will be running the jobs parallel and also it is a kind of load balancer right so you have a Mac ma more jobs you can run on two nodes parallel also it uh, helps in failover situations uh, let's say you lost one node the other node is going to take care of your jobs so, so that's uh, really helpful you as of now you can add four uh, uh, nodes uh, in your self-hosted IR now let's go back one more time here and uh, um, last thing, 10. Upload the self hosted IR logs to the Microsoft to ask them to take a look for you. So, you are uh, your self hosted IR has been running fine, and now all of a sudden it is running slow, and you did all those checks uh, and you are not able to figure out. Uh, so, you need to check uh, with the product uh, owner. So, product owner in this case is the Microsoft. Uh, they are the one who has written self hosted IR, they collect the logs. So, each time your self hosted IR is running, uh, it is uh, uh, connected with Microsoft so let me take you right there so right there so you see right there it is connected so it is running and online so it's communicating from your node so there is a self-hosted IR so integration runtime oh, let me take you let's go to the search Okay, here. Okay, so you see that it is a service uh, that is running on my machine. So it is communicating uh, uh, continuously with Microsoft Cloud and their uh, product. So there could be problem with the heartbeat. Maybe there is a network problem and your uh, self-hosted IR is not able to communicate and Microsoft is thinking uh, now this uh, service is off or there is something happening. Now on top of that you are running these uh, pipelines and uh, there is uh, pipelines are on the Microsoft Cloud, you know, on the Microsoft network. And, uh, 
these pipelines are not uh, saved locally on your self-hosted IR node. So there is a service running, uh, or it is you know use the resources from your machine, uh, but uh, it's a mix of uh, uh, product. So some parts are running on the cloud, some parts are running on your machine. Now. In this case, uh, what you need to do, you need to connect with Microsoft and ask them, hey, uh, my self-hosted IR is running slow and uh, I need to tell you why uh, why it is running slow. They will be saying, send us the logs. So you will go to the integration, runtime, configuration, send logs. And once you click on send logs, it is going to send you logs uh, to the Microsoft. Now, once uh, it will upload all those logs for the last seven days uh, to the Microsoft, uh, they will be able to uh, view these logs. So you see that is uh, uploading thousands of entries to the Microsoft it's gonna give you a report ID that's a good see right there the report ID you're gonna copy and send this uh, uh, report ID to Microsoft and uh, on the Microsoft side they will be able to use uh, some uh, logging tables and all that and uh, then uh, see what logs you have why your pipelines are running slow which activity is running slow or which pipeline is running slow and uh, how much CPU and memory is used so they can do a lot of analysis uh, once uh, you upload these logs for them so instead of you struggle all day and uh, try to figure out what is wrong I will suggest uh, do all these uh, sanity checks what you can do that and then uh, open a ticket with Microsoft uh, most of the times uh, any company who are um, really using a your data factory they have some support so uh, use uh, the resources from the Microsoft they have a lot of in-depth uh, um, uh, permissions uh, or uh, they have in-depth uh, knowledge and uh, permissions to see the logs and tell you what is going wrong so uh, but uh, these are uh, all the things you need to check um, now in the interview what I will do I will not take uh, these 30 minutes to explain that I will go quickly on them and if they ask me hey um, you know uh, would you uh, want to go more detail you can ask them actually hey do you want me to go for detail it's going to take me some time to explain all those uh, little items uh, that can be involved when my self hosted IR uh, is running uh, my pipeline is slow so explain them and I hope uh, you will be able to pass the interview you will be able to communicate and also you learn some basic uh, tips from this video that can be helpful uh, as the Azure Data Factory developer. I thank you for watching my videos and uh, please subscribe my channel and I will see you guys in next video.